we hired a new construction manager a couple weeks ago and he just did not work out. And I didn't fire him just because he crashed into a school bus. That's enough. But yeah, he just wasn't working out. We're, we're paying well. It's hard finding good work right now. And then, so James, he's been our interim construction manager. And I mean, he does amazing work, and but he's still young and, and the stress has been um, high. There's a lot of projects. And so he texted me while I was here yesterday evening and said, the keys are on the front seat, the door was locked, and usually he calls or something because it's after hours. And I thought that was a little weird. I went down there and um, he had left his polo shirt, his company card, the company phone, and the keys in the front seat. And I was like, holy sh what does this mean? Because he knows we're just stacked with work and we're down people and wow so um yep it's just fixing problems but this is just a bummer of a time <laughs> for this to go down but you know only thing you can do is just keep charging james can be with us anymore i don't know but um I think the stress may have gotten to him in it. It, it has been stressful. So I feel like we're still picking up the pieces from, uh, from Eric. The problem is we've got these jobs that need to be finished. Um, and so we, you know, we've come up with a plan um, for that, but suddenly having James gone is uh, throwing a, a wrench in that plan. Um, it's going to be challenging. The other thing is, you know, we did so much in the building a beautiful feature for um, Jeanette. It's having issues because we need to finish some things up. I, the lower pond has been unplugged, and I guess there's algae problems, mosquito problems. I mean, it's just like we're an A plus company, and, and there's just so we need to fix this stuff. You know, we need to come together as a team and and all work together and figure out what to do. That means, you know, everyone's voice is extremely important. We need to work together as a team to come up with solutions. And so we get another construction manager. It's, it's going to be a challenge. I'll be spending more time in the field. So we are shorthand. And I'm going to bust my ass to try and get someone in ASAP. The other thing, and this is extremely disturbing to me, is we were sealing up that area that didn't get sprayed by Linex at Jeanette's. And so Paul from Linex had uh, recommended something to use and we didn't use that product. So James had given Brian, the new construction manager, that job to do. And it turns out he used Henry's wet patch roof sealant, which is like, <sighs> we don't cut corners. I've never cut corners in, in my product. So <clears throat> it was really disturbing to find that out. And um, the Jeanette thing, I mean, that's an incredible project that we did. I mean, it looks freaking amazing and it'll work and it'll be revolutionary for people like nobody could have thought of and produced that product and it's derailing right now because of some s just stupid little mistakes. This has the potential to give us so much business because he is the top residential architect in the Long Beach area. You know, there's a lot of wealthy people there. So we need to fix this. I don't know what to do about the, the ceiling, sealant stuff, but I, I told them, you know, we could at least write a 10 year warranty on that work until I find out more about how, how the situation. Okay. Well, here we are at the Jeanette building. Uh, what we did with this is it was an old concrete water feature that was literally right up to the base of the building. And um, it was an old chlorinated system and it was leaking 
the filtration is literally, and this is, you know, 40 years old, running in pipes across this parking lot in under the really heavy grates. So I just didn't think it was a good idea to try and resurrect that filtration system, which was for chlorine anyway. I was like, well, hey, let's just reseal this thing. When it's concrete, things start leaking. You can't just patch it because in their separation, there's movement. No matter what, it's just gonna start leaking again. Less, put something flexible on it. So we had the entire thing sprayed with polyurea. And then we decided to do a closed system. Instead of taking the pipes out away from there, we created wetland filtration in there and intake bays and made the whole thing biological. plants and need to spruce these plants up a little bit but this is a really cool system before it was just chlorine and um, you can't put plants or anything like that or fish obviously so um, so now we're like water levels right there so you can see fish swimming around and that whole thing is a wetland filter right there and that is what is filtering this entire system. That's a wetland filter right here. And this poor guy needs work. We need to get some plants in this filter right here and hide these pipes. They got tar on the window. Bad news. So, you know what's cool is I just saw um, what's called fry. Those are little baby fish. So fish are already starting to propagate in the system. And the thing with these, um, ecosystems, these natural systems, is they just get better over time. By midsummer, this thing is just kind of acting like a skimmer. It's it's still skimming the, the top layer of water, and that's what we want. It's the most oxygenated bit of water is the top layer, and also it's, it's skimming in that fabric water tension, all those water molecules stuck together magnetically so there's dust and stuff like that on there it's getting pulled into the intake bay which has biological filtration as well but a bunch of biofilm on all the gravel and everything so it's grabbing all those particulates and then there's uh, the heterotrophic bacteria digesting all the organics so it's mechanically filtering out a bunch of stuff that otherwise end up on the bottom we're having an algae bloom which is not uncommon especially in the new pond but we want to be able to eliminate that Actually, in, in spring, particularly this spring, there was so much rain. The string algae blooms were pretty prolific. Um, so I noticed that I, I didn't like the, the skimming that was going on. I thought we could improve it. I shallowed it up at the very beginning. I, I deepened it going back a little bit. So we actually had a nice steady stream going back. I, unfortunately, this was already here, so we couldn't go deeper generally. Um, if we were excavating, we would excavate deep and then put the pumps down. Uh, it's just concrete, um, so we're sticking up kind of high. We come back with more boulders and hide things a little better. Uh, so I was just kind of messing around right there doing that. Also, amending some of the intake bay the way I did. You see a stream going back there and it just looks cool. Part of the aesthetic, right? It's like, you know, it's, like I love seeing streams in water trucks. That's why I do this stuff. We just want to make things really, really cool. We want it to look cool, but we want it to function properly. There's some tweaks that need to happen here, but not that many. So that's the good part. And, um, but it's coming along. Enjoy that. <laughs> 